<laughs> oh. oh, why hello there. But frankly, also quite rude of you to barge in on the most important time of the day when a gentleman takes his tea. Well, now, don't be shy, gather round, you've come for quite a spiffing affair today. And that is a review of a vehicle that is so fine that, frankly, it has its own monocle, old boy. It is, of course, the Tier 10, British medium tank, the Centurion Action 10. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let's not dilly-dally as we jump straight into the action. As Gentleman Baby lets you know everything there is to know about this fine British tank. <clears throat> okay, now that I'm done reinforcing pompous British stereotypes, let's jump down to the statistics of the Centurion Action 10 and show you how it stacks up compared to other tier 10 medium tanks. Since its introduction into the game now five years ago as a replacement for the top tier British medium tank, the FV4202, the statistics of the Centurion Action 10 have hardly changed, unlike the M48, the Leopard and the STB1 in this comparison. And so I really want to highlight that as it paints the whole picture of the Centurion Action 10 as to how the statistics feel in 2020 compared to how they did in 2015. And while vehicles like the 50M, the Object 140 and the 121 are all going to be getting buffs on the super test, obviously not guaranteed to come to the game, but it looks like they're going to be buffed a lot like the T125, the IS-4 and the E100 were recently. So take that into consideration while I'm reviewing the Centurion Action 10. The damage per minute of the vehicle, 2,720, it's got to be considered complete middle of the road right now. It's not awful. You are going to be able to muscle your way through tier 8 and tier 9 tanks, but don't think that you're going to be handling the tank destroyers. Don't think you're going to be out damaging per minute vehicles like the SDB-1, which pretty much have 10% more damage per minute than you do. They are going to be able to shred you faster than you can shred them. The penetration, however, on the Centurion Action 10 is great, 268. It's right in the middle, the same as the M48, not quite as good as the Leopard these days. Now the Centurion Action 10 has heat rounds with 330 or 340 millimeters of penetration, which will be more than enough to contest every single armor plate at very good distances. But one thing that I love about the vehicle is that it actually gets incredible high explosive rounds with 105 millimeters of penetration and 480 damage. So you can use these either to do reasonable amounts of damage to heavily armored vehicles or to rip apart lower tier tanks and then that really does bump up the damage of min damage per minute of the vehicle up to 3300 which is absolutely wonderful however don't feel like you can just spam hash all the time and penetrate 105 millimeters is 105 millimeters the alpha of the tank is 390 very standard for a 105 millimeter gun the shell velocity however of 1478 is fantastic if we take a look at the shell velocity of the heat rounds though 1173 not awful of the hash rounds also 100 1173 so you are going to be able to not have to give too much lead at decent distances and it's quite funny thinking that the shell velocity of the heat and the high explosive rounds is actually better than the standard shell velocity of the UDES and is comparable to the STB-1. One of the nicest things about the tank is it does carry a huge amount of ammunition. Yeah, you really know you're scraping the barrel when you're highlighting the amount of ammo that a tank can carry. But no, it is it is nice to have because you can take a huge variety of armor piercing, heat and high explosive squashed head ammunition for the situation and you won't really be running out. So while the Centurion Action 10 used to have really good aim time, it doesn't look very good anymore, right? Worse than the M48, much worse than Leopard, and even worse than the STB-1 now, which used to have 2.3 seconds aim time. However, the accuracy is the second best in this comparison, and while it's definitely not nearly as good as the Leopard, it's still pretty darn nice. One thing that looks terrible about this tank, however, are the dispersion values. They're the worst in this comparison in every area. So do not drop vertical stabilizers on this tank. You definitely need to use vertical stabilizers on this tank to improve the already poor dispersion and to kind of mitigate needing to use some of that rather mediocre aim time. One thing that is wonderful about the Centurion Action 10, however, is the 10 degrees of gun depression. Now, if you're looking at these statistics and thinking it's the best in class, well, that's simply not the case. Remember that the STB-1 and the UDES have hydropneumatic suspensions, which allow the STB-1 to increase its gun depression up to 14 degrees and allow the UDES to increase its gun depression up to 12 degrees. But remember that that is only if they're going slowly, and that doesn't mean that they're going to have that gun depression over the side of the tank. Centurion Action 10 does feel fairly comfortable with that regard. But as we move on to the armor, you're going to find out that, yeah, you probably don't want to be turning your turret to the side and exposing your hull. So now onto the mobility. Forwards, 53. Very nice. 20 backwards. Not so good. The power to weight ratio of this vehicle, 19. It's pretty okay. It's comparable to the UDES. 
worse than the Leopard, but better than the M48. The ground resistances, however, on this tank are lovely, and they're the best in this comparison, which kind of mean that its 50 tank traverse is actually slightly better than that, when we take into account that it can perform across all terrains and doesn't get bogged down. So now let's talk about the armor of the Centurion Action 10. 120 on the front, 50 on the side, and 31 on the rear. Yeah, not many of these vehicles actually have very good rear armor. In fact, this is the best rear armor of all of these tanks. The side armor, though, of 50.8 is actually very important because that means that 152 millimeter caliber guns will actually not overmatch this tank. This seems to be a very arbitrary, but also a very specific number that Wargaming are taking into account. So you will be able to side scrape in this tank against an ISU-152, for example, but don't side scrape against a T-30 as they are going to be able to penetrate you every single time. So while the armor of the Centurion Action 10 looks pretty good on paper, yeah, it's, it's actually not. 120 millimeters of armor will only get up to about 200 millimeters of effective when you are on a level playing field. So that means that the tanks are going to easily be able to penetrate this tank in every single way. However, of course, if you are using the gun depression of this tank, and that means that the upper hull of this vehicle actually becomes 280 and right in the middle 300, which is lovely. Now let's talk about the turret. This is one of the most important aspects of the Centurion Action 10 for you to be able to use the tank effectively. So take a look at the shape of the turret in the visual comparison here. The turret has a very angled forehead and has this very bizarre shape where the, the side is actually very poor unless you're pointing your gun directly towards your opponent. Now, if we take a look at the live comparison of this tank, if you're not using the gun depression, everybody can manage to, well, tier 10 tanks will be able to easily penetrate the top of the vehicle. And if they load heat, they're going to be able to go through it pretty much every single time. And so this means that you always want to be on a ridgeline. Look how the armor performs now, however, if we're on a ridgeline. All the area above the gun is a ricochet and there are some parts of the turret that are actually more like 280 and some areas going up to 300. This is a very solid turret if you are using your 10 degrees of gun depression. But it does have a weak point on top, this horrible crown on top of the vehicle that is going to be easily penetrated by even tier 8 tanks. So make sure you are using your gun depression. However, take a look what happens if they load heat even if you are using your gun depression. Now if you're using your full 10 degrees, you are going to be okay. But look what happens if maybe you're using only six or seven degrees. Now they've got a 50% chance of being able to go through the top of your turret. And so heat rounds are possibly one of the best ways to counter the Centurion Action 10. And you should always load heat ammunition if you're shooting at the Centurion Action 10's turret, as you will just frankly have a much better chance of being able to go through it. So be careful if you are playing the Centurion Action 10, if they start spamming heat rounds at you, you're probably going to start losing those 1950 hit points fairly quickly indeed. So the camo rating of this vehicle is much better than the pattern, but worse than all of the other vehicles in this comparison, and significantly worse than the UDES, which actually has wonderful base camo ratings compared to all of these other tanks. A passing mention should be made to the view range of the tank, which is 410. This is actually magnificent. Not quite as good as the pattern, but on par with the Leopard. What this means is that with the Centurion Action 10, you can actually get rid of coated optics on this vehicle and use vents if you have an exceptionally skilled crew or you're using pudding and tea or maybe you've got some bond equipment because this is your favorite tier 10 medium tank and with the equipment 2.0 changes if you use vents inside the mobility slot of this vehicle to get six percent crew skill from the vents you can actually get up to 455 meters view range without even using pudding and tea on this tank if you have recon and situational awareness and brothers in arms on your crew and this is definitely one of my most recommended ways to min max vehicles like this the pattern and the leopard to give them a little bit of a kick compared to the blind soviet medium tanks equipment wise even with equipment 2.0 i would be really boring on this tank and use the vents inside the mobility slot use a gun rammer and importantly use the vertical stabilizers because as i showed this tank has worse dispersion values than all of the other medium tanks in this comparison Crew skills wise, it's pretty obvious. You want to get repairs first, then you want to get things like recon and situational awareness. The tank actually has a pretty nice loadout with the loader also being the radio operator, which takes some of the pressure off the commander, which makes it very easy to be able to get that view range maxed out on this tank. But you know what? I think that's quite enough talk. Let's see how it performs on the battlefield. So first up, we have a pretty nice matchup for the Centurion Action 10 here. We are top tier against some tier 9 and tier 8 vehicles, and there's only one self-propelled gun, which is at tier 8. Artillery really will be the bane of your existence in a tank like this, a vehicle that wants to simply dominate a ridgeline. 
but due to its rather large size and very weak upper hull armor, and not even the best thickness on the turret, even though it's very well angled, if you use the gun depression of the tank, yet you do not take artillery hits very well. Uh, maybe not even, maybe that black dog is there. It means that I shouldn't really be going up on this ridge line as confidently as I am. But really, I think he just overpoked against the 60 TP. But at least he managed to get us lots of vision, so we now know what the enemy team are doing. I'm actually not happy about the fact that I allowed that bat Chatillon 12T up on top of the hill. But then again, why wouldn't I focus the Char Fu Tier 4? So this vehicle, a French auto-loading medium tank with a pretty okay turret, but not an incredible turret, is just a perfect match for the Centurion Action 10. He isn't going to be able to go. He isn't going to be able to go through my turret reliably if I use the gun depression on that ridge line. But I'm definitely going to be able to go through his. That is the dream scenario for this tank. You want to try and find vehicles that you can penetrate. Hopefully their turret, because of course, if you can penetrate their hull, you will have to expose your hull to be able to see their hull. Because there's no way for you to be able to see their hull while only exposing your turret unless you really do have a very funky angle on your opponents. So I always try to think about vehicles where I can out turret them and so I don't have to engage their hull unless maybe I can manage to make them ricochet. If I'm engaging vehicles which I know I have to get the hull, what I'll often do is try and bait the opponent into shooting my turret by keeping it well angled, maybe try and get them to shoot the, the Coppola. Hopefully by using the gun depression it's going to be a tricky shot on them and I'm, I'm going to be able to avoid it and then I can expose my hull while they're reloading and go to town on their weaker hull armor. So unfortunately for me, even the great accuracy of the Centurion Action 10 there wasn't able to deal with the 263. And the artillery on my team only gets a paltry 26 spotting there. Well, I get the 26 spotting. He did 26 damage with the splash to the tier 9 Soviet tank destroyer. That's not great stuff. So I'm really worried about this Bat Chatty on 12T managing to come up on top of the hill here. A little bit of a tip, by the way, uh, on a different related note. And that is that if the Bat Chatty on 12T was big brains right now, what he would do is just make his way up over here and he could be able to shoot me. But I think I can see why he can't do that, and that's because I've got lots of heavy tanks below him which are actually harassing him. So good job by the heavy tanks on my team to stop the Bat Chatillon from being able to make his way up here. But this is an absolute power position, and it will completely stop me from being able to use my mid-ridge. So I put a shot there at the Borask, and unfortunately for me, it doesn't actually overmatch the vehicle's side armor. I was hoping that the 105mm gun might go through the paper-thin Borask armor, but it actually had enough to be able to ricochet. So all I do is hit the tracks of the Borask, I lock him in place, but a quick use of the repair kit, and he's back in the action. And right now, this is not looking good. We've managed to kill one tank, but the enemy have killed a third of our team. And so I've decided to make my way over into this position and instead be able to try and get some side shots here. And this is where the Centurion Action 10 is meant to be, boys and girls. Against vehicles with weak turrets and even sometimes weak hulls, if you think you can be a bit cheeky, on a ridge line. You have to do this in a Centurion Action 10. Get on a ridge, use your 10 degrees of gun depression, only expose your turret if at all possible, and if you do that, you will be very strong indeed. Knowing that the Char Fu Tier 4 was on low hit points there, and knowing that my team was down by a third of our, a third of our initial starting player base, which I say the, the team composition, I had to make a move, and so I decided to finish off the, uh, the Char Fu Tier 4 and to make my way up on top of the hill to deal with this cheeky Bat Chatillon. And I had a high explosive squashed head round loaded there for his tank, and I'm hoping that I can still manage to penetrate the 60 TP. We don't, but we actually still roll for 173 even for a non-pen there. Now we're loading the AP rounds and ball right into the tracks with 440 alpha damage as well. Nice roll. He shuts down my Tier 8 Soviet heavy tank, but we managed to put another one into the rear of his vehicle. You can actually do a fairly nice 1,000 damage to that tank while also locking down his tracks for the 60 TP to get a little bit of Polish on Polish action. All right, now that we've managed to get our team back into this game and I've still got all of my hit points left, it's time to be aggressive. Where are the enemy going to be? Well, clearly they're going to be up on that ridge line with the Grilla and the Udez and the artillery. So what I want to do is not kind of just boldly rush across there because do you notice how my team is not quite in position to be able to shoot for me? I want to try and harass from this mid ridge. I want to try and see if I can spot the 263. But now that I see that my heavy tanks have actually managed to find the Grilla at the back, I think it's now time to invest some of my hit points. We are done only exposing ourselves on a ridge line, only exposing our turret armor, it is time to be more aggressive in the century in action 10. Now, you really don't want to make a play like this against a big gun line. Remember that the hull is 
is thick. That's the only way to say it. It's large. It's an awful silhouette on this tank. And so you are going to get absolutely annihilated if you make plays like this too early on in the game. I'm not saying that don't go and contest the most important locations. You must. That's why I went straight towards the mid ridge at the beginning. But I didn't do anything suicidal. You can make really bold, aggressive plays in Soviet medium tanks. Go play a Soviet medium tank if you want to make bold, aggressive plays. Centurion Action 10 is best suited for getting onto a ridgeline, dominating the most important location, hopefully whittling down its opponents, and then using its hit points later on in the game where it isn't so outnumbered. All right, so that 1-2-1 rammed us, but he actually took more ramming damage than we received. So I did 322 to him, and I also managed to track him as well, and he did 265 to us, showing that this is not a light tank. Don't ram a Centurion Action 10 and expect to retain all of your hit points. I'm happy about that, the tier 10 medium tank kind of throwing his vehicle away, and from here on, it's hopefully a time to just see if we can get some Grilla. Now, I usually would fire high explosive squashed head ammunition against the vehicle, and you can see I'm actually loading it for the second round, but unfortunately for me, my team actually manages to finish him off, but I'll take that 1,100 tracking. Every little helps when you're trying to get experience on this tank, or if you're just trying to go for some marks of excellence on the vehicle. And locking him in place means that he's not going to run away, and so we would have been able to put our second shot in. So I'm hoping that my Heshran is going to be able to go in there. Maybe I over-aimed a little bit, but that's just the poor gun handling and the poor accuracy of this tank. But when you are fully aimed, oh, it's good. That accuracy, that 0.32 base accuracy, which you can improve with crew skills, which you can improve events on the tank, is going to do you proud. And so all in all, a fairly slow start here for the Centurion Action 10, but a strong finish. And I feel like that's what you want to do in this vehicle. You don't want to be too brash early. Wait for the battle lines to be drawn, grind out your opponents with a strong turret, and then you can make your bold aggressive plays towards the latter part of the game, and you aren't going to be outnumbered with this horrific hull. Anyway, let's go and see how it performs against some tier 10 tanks this time. All right, Prokhorovka it is. And yeah, not the ideal matchup, I don't feel. Two EBRs on the enemy team to have to deal with and two self-propelled guns. Now, I must say that this replay is actually from the 1.9 patch. So this is old Prokhorovka, so they don't have the power position towards the, the C1 area. And also, the hill is shaped differently. So keep in mind that the plays that you're going to see me make in this game, while they do show off the, what the Centurion Action 10 is capable of, it's not how you would play exactly on Prokhorovka now. You play kind of like it, but in a different bush, because the bushes in the hill have changed. All right, so the Centurion Action 10, we're going to try and advance as quickly as we can up, up on top of the hill. And with the power to weight ratio, the ground resistance is on this tank. It's not the slowest medium tank, but we were down to about 12 kilometers an hour there, although it is quite a steep slope up that part. We're kind of just ahead of the E50M, but no one's really thinking that the E50M is super fast. And if I was in the Leopard, I would be up here quicker. But remember, the Leopard doesn't have the turret armor, right? The Centurion Action 10 does, so they're not really too comparable. So we spotted an M48 and a T62A below us, and I'm going to go forwards into the bush and have a little bit of poke on the M48. I do actually manage to get spotted, but I'm hoping that we can manage to put a shot in against the 60TP. Unfortunately, it bounced long distance, and immediately you can see that I am dabbing the two key on the Centurion Action 10 for these long range engagements. They are going to help, and they're also going to help against the turret of the M48. If only I could hit it. Now, I was really worried about sitting up there. I didn't want to sit up there for very long. That is a precarious position. You are going to get absolutely smashed if you get caught out on top of the hill on Prokhorovka. I am trying to spot. Hoping that I'm not going to get spotted, and in fact, I don't actually get lit up that time, which gives me a little bit more confidence in managing to catch out the M48. Sixth Sense, obviously your friend here, and you can use it to gauge how cheeky you can be. I don't want to be too cheeky, however, because as I said, if you do get caught out in this position, I'm going to get nailed by the heavy tanks, I'm going to get nailed by the tank destroyers at the back. And on new Prokhorovka, not the version that you see here, the enemy are also going to sit in this location, just uh, around there in this area and they are going to be able to absolutely obliterate you on top of the hill. I don't know, I feel like Old Prokhorovka was better, it was more fun for me, felt like it was also more progressive, I felt like there was an opportunity to really dominate the hill. I feel like the hill is a little bit too easy to take on from that northern position, but oh well. Let's focus on the Centurion Action 10, not Prokhorovka meta. All right, so we managed to shut down probably one of the biggest competitions that the M48 has. Sorry, the M48 that the Centurion Action 10 has, and that, of course, is the M48. 
to, while we've got a little bit of a lull in the action, let me talk about the how the Centurion Action 10 compares to two of its biggest competitors, the Leopard and the M48. Well, obviously, the Leopard with its buffs has the better accuracy, the better speed, the better DP... Well, not the better DPM, sorry, the better alpha damage, the better penetration, the better shell velocity. Oh, the list goes on. Basically, the, the Leopard is better in every single way, apart from armor. And so... But then again, armor does really count for a lot inside World of Tanks, right? You, you can't just brush aside the armor on a tank. If you, if you do that, you might as well be playing a light vehicle. The Centurion Action 10 can grind out opponents on a ridgeline unlike the Leopard is able to do. And that means that the Leopard is able to... Well, the Leopard is unable, I should say, to be able to make the aggressive plays that the Centurion Action 10 can. The Centurion Action 10 will find much better luck by being up front on an aggressive ridge line, whereas the Leopard is going to do better kind of at the, the rear guard, where it's able to just try and snipe it out and not have to risk so much of the hull and even risk the, the turret on the tank. So if you want to play super sneaky, super snipey, you want to be fast, you want to play a Leopard. However, let's say that you play the Centurion Action 10 and you absolutely hate the way that you can't duel your opponents and you can't find ridge lines on every single map. Maybe you're playing on a Runeberg, maybe you're playing on a Himmelsdorf. You, you can't find ridge lines on, on all maps inside World of Tanks. Sometimes, when you're in a Tier 8 or a Tier 9 game, you don't want to be losing hit points when they just keep nailing you in the hull again and again and again. A lot of people will become very frustrated with the Centurion Action 10 because of that. Well, what you want to do then is obviously pick the M48. A5 pattern because the M48 has the hull armor especially it's got a big boat shaped hull over the the midsection of the tank which allows you to over angle the vehicle and bait people into shooting the side armor you can't do that on the Centurion Action 10 you can side scrape in the vehicle but you're, you're still probably going to get shot in the upper hull because most times you're side scraping you can't side scrape but also use the gun depression of the vehicle the M48 also has the slightly better gun in regards to everything apart from the accuracy and the gun handling on that tank means that you could probably also drop vertical stabilizers on the M48 and still get with it, with uh, get away with it, which is important on equipment 2.0. And also the M48, you can drop, you don't need coated optics on that tank. You have 420 meters base view range. And so even if you're a free to play player and you're not willing to use cola on the tank, you can just get up to you know 470 meters view range even with standard equipment on the vehicle so drop those coated optics use vents maybe even using a use a turbo on the m48 to be able to get up towards the centurion action 10 level and when we think about the the differences in the dispersion values that's a reality that kind of mitigates that slower speed that the m48 has which will put it kind of up to where the centurion action 10 is and so this is where soft stats matter because now with equipment 2.0 you're able to change the way that vehicles work to mitigate some of those weaknesses. But if you don't have the base stats to be able to improve on the tanks, well, then you can't really do too much about it. All right, so now you're going to see one of my favorite plays to make on Prokhorovka. And you're going to see how we change a game where we had 2,500 damage and 800 spotting to doing some real wild stuff here. Now, one of the biggest mistakes that I sometimes make on Prokhorovka is that I will try to advance around this location. I will go up here and I will poke, but from this position, you will actually get shot from all of the tanks on the high ground here. So what you want to do instead is to slinky your way towards this southern location, and this is just the dream for the Centurion Action 10. 10 degrees of gun depression, a fairly accurate gun, heat rounds with decent penetration, unlike some of the newer tier 10 medium tanks in the game to be able to handle the mouse in these in this scenario. And it's just the absolute dream. We've got the vision, we've got the turret armor, we've got the gun depression, and just look at what we are doing with our game. And this is where you need to get your Centurion Action 10s to have big games in the vehicle, and also to just be able to be influential in the vehicle. There is probably no better tier 10 medium tank for just being reactionary on a ridge line. Sure, you've got the SDB-1, but that vehicle has to use its hydropneumatic suspension to be able to achieve 14 degrees of gun depression, which feels pretty awkward in a, shall we say, a frenetic fight. Sure, you've got the UDES, but again, it has to use its, its, um, its hydropneumatic suspension to be able to achieve 12 degrees of gun depression. 
The Centurion Action 10 doesn't have to do that, and so it's a much easier vehicle to play to be able to dominate on a ridge line compared to the hydropneumatic suspension tanks. And it will be a much more friendly, shall we say, training vehicle as well for players who want to try and start to play medium tanks and dominate ridge lines without just going towards the SDB-1 and the UDES. It's a lot more friendly tank. It's a lot more forgiving. You don't have to be so experienced at the game as you have to be in the SDB-1 and the, the UDES to be able to really make the most that all of those tanks can give you. Which is why I would thoroughly recommend the Centurion Action 10 for newer players out there that don't just want to play the same old Soviet tanks that everyone is playing. But there's kind of also a reason why they're probably playing them. This is the Ridgeline beginner slash intermediate tank. Decent penetration, decent shell velocity, decent turret armor if you are using the gun depression with enough accuracy and especially view range to be able to make it friendly for any player irrelevant of how experienced they are and especially how many credits or gold they're willing to throw at the game. So on Glacier we managed to pick up an ace tanker for the 1173 base experience that we achieved 4000 damage and 3000 spotting combined a confederate medal and we make a very healthy profit as we didn't need to fire any heat rounds against those tier 8 tanks. However, on Prokhorovka, we have a stonking result. 1,378 base for that 6,500 damage that we dealt, in addition to 4,500 damage upon detecting, which actually got us our third mark of excellence for the Centurion Action 10. However, I think we did pay for it. Well, actually, when we were using a premium account with the first payout of the day, we actually made 63,000 credits profit. But yeah, with all of those heat rounds fired, especially towards the mouse at the end, it wasn't very much a free-to-play game. So all in all, the Centurion Action 10, is it the best tier 10 medium tank in the game? No, it's, it's not really the best at anything. There's another tank in the game that is better than the Centurion Action 10 in every single area. However, its well-rounded nature still means that you can do well in this vehicle. And I think for a conservative player who doesn't want to rush into the battle with reckless abandon, where they're going to need Halama to be able to survive, I think you can make this thing work. And I think for one of the tanks with gun depression, it's definitely one of the more friendly tanks to be able to play. And while unfortunately it doesn't look like there are any buffs in sight for the Centurion Action 10, I think there'll probably be one in the horizon, although it might be a year from now. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, it's good to be back making tank reviews again. I really enjoyed this one today, and I hope all of you did too. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up, but if you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And let me know in the comments what you think about the Centurion Action 10. Do you think it's an absolute stinker, or do you still play yours consistently? And you've got a bit of a, a sweet spot for the vehicle. And as always, have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy your Friday and whatever you get up to. And hopefully I'll see you soon.